Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of learning to truly value your time. The truth is, we all have the habit of wasting our valuable time on things that don't deserve our attention. This can range from wasting our time worrying to focusing our attention on activities that set us back, like too much screen time, watching TV, or even spending time with people who hinder our progress and growth. One of the most important traits successful people have is that they value their time. They focus their time and attention in a calculated manner, only focusing on tasks that bring them closer to their goals. They also make sure to surround themselves with people who inspire, love, and value them. When you truly value yourself, you also value how you spend your time. Time is one of the most valuable and treasured assets we have. And if we are not conscious of how we spend our time, it's easy to spend days, months, and even years wasting that valuable time on things that never really mattered. The truth is, the time we waste can never be replaced. So make it your mission today to truly value your time and be conscious of how you spend it. You are worthy of an incredible life, and learning to manage your time is the first step to unlocking your greatness. As Stephen Covey quotes, until you value yourself, you won't value your time. Until you value your time, you will not do anything with it. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, what other products does the VicTech app have? Um, it's, a, it's a free app to download, so you're kind of choosing your own adventure, right? Like, um, if I want to add this or I want to add that, I can go into vSpace and look at all the different things that are available. So it's an in-app store that's kind of like nothing else that's ever been created for, for investing. And we're going to continue to grow that with people creating content that is coming from other like really smart people throughout the world, right? That are putting their content in there that maybe you would never have access to before. They, you know, you'd be able to go on the store and just look at it right there in vSpace. Next up on the show, we have Jonathan Gibbons, the founder of the app VicTech. VicTech is an easy to use investment decision making platform for stocks, ETFs, mutual fund options, all powered by real time data. Jonathan, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. It's a little bit cold here in Toronto, but I'm adjusting. <laughs> We've had a little cold snap in Florida where it got into the 30s and 40s and like everybody pulls out uh, Toronto parkas right, for two days. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know what? You're lucky. You're in Florida. Nice, warm weather. I'm pretty jealous. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice today. It's about 65. So, you know, no complaints here. No complaints yeah. here. I'm jealous. Let's talk about your career background and why you started the VicTech app. Okay, sure. So my background is in uh, serial entrepreneur. Um, I've had two startups that were both in the tech space and um, we built and sold both of those companies over the last uh, 10, 12 years. And we were always uh, traders, um, kind of with our own time, like uh, with our own capital. And after we sold the last company, we started to um, build our own proprietary, like kind of trading application um, mm -hmm. for ourselves. And it was never meant to be used uh, externally. And we set up a proprietary trading company. And that was really where we were headed with our careers, uh, me and my partners. And um, it ended up like a kind of a happenstance thing where Robinhood and a lot of the other uh, kind of uh, applications that were coming out on the phones made it easy and more accessible for everybody from the next two generations, the millennials and the Zs, to have access to the global markets and investing in general uh, is changing dramatically. And so we had this proprietary app we made and then we saw the trends that were, were coming about and we we're like, hey, there's uh, a lot of opportunity in the space to deliver products to people that would help them a lot, that helps us and um, a lot bigger opportunity in that than just keeping it for ourselves. So the product starts to turn into something more and here we are today. So it's like uh, kind of like how life works, especially when you're an entrepreneur, uh, like a lifestyle, you, things just kind of roll into into themselves. So my work history and, and, and startups that we've worked on all kind of led to here if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I love that you said you had three startups. So let's talk about your journey into entrepreneurship. How did this happen for you? Oh, man. Um, so when I was uh, like 
probably 22, 23 years old, like I, it's like how life works. Like uh, I go, I have a job out of school. Um, I had grown up playing sports. I played basketball in high school and then went to college and played basketball. So it's competitive and ended up, uh, you know, getting a job right out of college. I wasn't, you know, I was five foot 10. I wasn't going to the NBA. Mm -hmm. um you know playing for the raptors or something so i needed to get a career um i was pretty good at mathematics and um, pretty good with people and i was working with a, a company just a corporate company and a big time entrepreneur here at, locally that had built a pretty good sized business um was like hey you have uh, some unique skills um why don't you come work for me i'll give you you know a, a, you know a real salary you can have a living mm -hmm. and um you know uh, you start start your career with me and I was like okay that sounds amazing and, and little did I know that once you kind of step into that world you're never gonna step into anything else right and so yeah. I worked with him for several years and learned all about how really the the it was a big company it went from uh, you know a quarter of a billion dollars to uh, or 60 60 million to 260 270 million dollar company um, in two or three years and then it went on to be a billion dollar company and I had met folks in that process that were working on stuff um, on their own and went out on, and joint ventured with a couple of them. And then we started another company after that. And so it's like once you, it's like a, it's like a, a, a trade, I guess you would call it. Like, so once you kind of learn the entrepreneurial path and, and startups and how companies are formed and looking at industries and um, how, how the, the financial engineers look at it versus people that are creating um, uh, new spaces and new industries look at it. It's a totally different perspective on life, right? And mm -hmm. um, I kind of got the, I got bit, and now I just, now I couldn't, I could never uh, let it go after that. So yeah, that's uh, that's how we got here, I guess you would say. Yeah, as you said, you're a serial entrepreneur, so <laughs> you definitely are. Let's talk about big tech. Like, why did you want to bring this to the forefront? Um, so when we were looking at it, uh, I guess I would say like um, clicking to trade is easy, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, clicking to trade doesn't make you money though. Um, you know, in, in the most searched uh, item, we did a lot of uh, natural language processing research and that's like, you know, they use uh, artificial intelligence to um, look at word choices that are being uh, repeatedly used, questions, phrases that are being repeatedly asked. Uh, it's like Google on steroids, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. And one of the most uh, um, consistent things we saw back in 2017 and 2018 was apps or tools to help me learn investing or to better invest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were some patterns that we saw in the the natural language progression and then also what we saw from just the natural research of the two generations the two largest generations ever the z's and the um, millennials uh, were augmented generations so they want to have tools and apps to help them invest like we same way we do with spotify we discover a new song like we trust the applications and we're the first to really embrace that as a, our two generations and we thought that that was a huge trend that was gonna really kind of change the way we all do these things. And that's why we ended up uh, kind of pulling the app to the forefront instead of just keeping it behind the scenes and built a mobile app and um, are continuing to, to build towards the, the curve, towards where, where everybody's at because the, um, the tools and resources are available digitally via algorithms and everything else to enhance the user's experience to bring them things that they would never have thought of and that's the way of the future versus kind of trusting somebody in the past like to give you information that's not what we do anymore or expect mm -hmm. especially right now with COVID, it's really important that you know you invest your money the right way um, so let's talk about how the big tech app can help you and guide you through that process Okay, so like one of the first things that uh, anybody can do, like we really are working right now to uh, make the uh, app realize your persona, like, uh, you know, whether you're just exploring stuff or whether you're an active investor or whether you're a regular trader on a day-to-day -day basis, um, there's all kinds of different uh, features and functions of the application and content curators on there. So other people actually create content and put it on the site as well um, that's connected with folks to help them on that journey. So when you're like looking at something, 
like COVID, for example, or uh, just in general, like, you know, managing your own money, the best thing to do is to kind of know where you're at with your own journey and then to begin to utilize resources uh, that fit your where you're at in the cycle uh, of, of investing. So if you're like learning, we have a thousand article knowledge base that's inside the app from everything to what is money to, you know, what is a yield, which is a, a, a dividend that's like paid out on a, on a, on a stock or, or an ETF that gives you like kind of a, uh, like a savings account, right? It's like a payment to mm -hmm. what is a derivative and what are options. So it's ranging from the tutorial level all the way to looking at like high end options data for a regular active trader. So really the app is applicable up and down the experience kind of level food chain uh, to say, and it really is meant to help inform uh, better decisions on your part. So the more information that you have with real time data, the more accessibility you have to um, things that make your decisions better and uh, even things like practicing, right? Like you can go in there and create practice accounts and um, before you actually live trade, right? Why should you go to an app and trade real money until you've actually practiced? Or maybe you have a concept that you want to try. You can come in there into the app and uh, try it out for, you know, for nothing. It's free and you can actually just pretend that that is real and, and begin to see what really happens with that, which which is what we really suggest people do, especially uh, people that are learning investing, early to investing, um, and are starting to dig into this because they got a little bit more time on their hands. They're gonna mm -hmm. get to practice. And so there's the, everything in this whole range of, uh, of product, applicable product for everybody in there. Mm -hmm. I feel like with millennials and our generation, um, they're a little bit intimidated with you know, investing their money, they don't know where to start. So what would yeah. you say to encourage our viewers to, you know, start downloading an app like yours and investing their money? Okay, so like what, what I would say is, uh, you know, typically, like when you look at like a stock screener, right? Like, so I don't even know what a stock screener is, if you ask me, and I've never looked at like, you know, a, a stock screener. What do you mean? Like, uh, yeah. you know, what is a stock, right? Yeah. Um, so we have made it very interactive. So if you come in and you, you would never even know stock screening, right? Like, or what that is, you go to our explore search and you click on the explore search and it opens up a, six different things. You can look at stocks, you can look at ETFs, mutual funds, um, mixes, like mm -hmm. the things that you see in your daily life. You can look at like a comparison between mutual funds and ETFs, and then you can look at your risk profile. So mm -hmm. you're actually looking at stocks and ETFs and mutual funds based on like a profile. So like a fence sitter or a squirrel, somebody that like saves all their money or somebody that's a speculator or a gambler and the system brings you all the things mathematically that would apply to that right profile for example the risk profile and you don't have to even understand how to do that or how the algorithm works like when you're using spotify how do they know that that song that you just listened to you know two minutes ago was similar to this one over here like that's a algorithm based right and that same kind of logic can be applied to the way you experience uh, looking at finance, right? Like mm -hmm. you can look at stocks the same way. So like when you look at, if you like, if you typed in Tesla, then the system would pull up Tesla and it would score Tesla using mathematics compared to all the other stocks that are in Tesla's sector, mm -hmm. right? And so not only instantly do you find out what Tesla looks like and what's going on with Tesla, you see all these other stocks there that are very similar to Tesla that you may never even heard of or didn't even know anything about. All that was visual. So you actually are clicking pictures of like transportation, right? You don't have to know what transportation is. You're picking pictures of transportation, right? And you're picking pictures of agriculture and it's very intuitive. So it's very interactive. So it's taking the scary out of it and making it kinesthetic. And that's the goal with the whole app is that it's more like the augmentation that we're used to experiencing. And that's our commitment is to continue to develop towards that user experience that makes it like, uh, you know, easy to use. We use a feed, a social feed on the on the on the home of the app and on the home of the, the actual product itself, the web product, where it's bringing you information directly to your feed 
that you wouldn't even have thought to go look for. So we pull stocks that are uh, high performers and showing you those, and those are called show-offs, and they just come drop right into your feed. So it's like a, it's a, we're, we're mirroring the user experience that we're all used to on a day-in and day-out basis um, to augment our lives that we're getting in everything else. We should get that in finance too, right? Mm -hmm. Like why should it be, you know, uh, convoluted with, uh, it's crazy hard terminology. It should be fun and, and experiential, right? So that's why I would say it's very important to, to download apps like this. And this is kind of new stuff, right? Like, um, uh, you know, where it hasn't been thought about it in that context where people are like, oh, we're gonna take it here. And we're really committed to trying to do that. There's a lot of math behind it that, that helps bring those uh, kind of things to the forefront, but it's for the users, it's very, uh, very uh, simple to, to interact with. Mm -hmm. And as you said, there are a lot of different users or beginners, and there are people that already invest in stocks. I know for me personally, I started looking at money differently during the pandemic. I became a first um, time homeowner recently. And there I also, you go. Okay. Yeah. And I also um, started investing my money in a TFSA account. My mom's the financial planner, so she's kind of okay. guided me. But for everyone yeah. that doesn't have that, um, you know, how can the Big Tech app help you personalize um, and invest your money personalized? to your own needs okay so like our risk profiles that you use when you're searching for stocks are really key like uh they really help out a lot um when you're and they, it's not just stocks it's mutual funds and etfs too um because you were talking about mutual funds a second ago mm -hmm. so if you went to our explorer and you started looking at the um the risk profile uh, categories and you selected something based on the way you think about money mm -hmm. that's like the first step um, when you're actually creating something for a portfolio, you look at that and you're like, okay, I'm like more of a on the fence type person. So you're a fence sitter. When you click fence sitter, it's going to filter out everything that is probably going to be something that makes you sweat a little bit, right? So like, let's, let's talk about gas exploration, like oil and gas exploration. They historically have a volatility that is like all over the place. So you would be like holding it and be like, oh my gosh, I'm up like 50% today. And then the next day you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm down like 50% today. That's not something as a fence sitter you want to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're, it's going to apply the mathematics behind volatility to help just get you in something that is typically, you know, what somebody with that type of persona of risk is going to feel and, and be comfortable holding, right? That's one way that you could utilize the app. And, and that's going to bring to you all kinds of different things to look at and explore and rank all those things that are applicable to that risk profile. The other piece is um, if you're using or creating a portfolio, whether you're practicing or you're mirroring something that you already have, the app will actually help you balance that out. So it will tell you at the bottom of the, the app, uh, portfolio area, hey, you're missing a little bit of this. Why don't you click here and go look at some, or you're missing a little bit of this if you want to be in balance. And then the last piece I would say to that is like if you're putting stuff together, uh, you can turn on like some of the algorithms. Like uh, we have a watch my six algorithm and we have all these other kind of cool things that, that are in, um, I, I call them like a, our, our terminology uh, where we just speak speak clearly about what's really going on yeah. and that will alert you and send you push notifications if at any time something bad's happening and you need to be let know stuff that maybe you would count on somebody to call you for that stuff's like hitting your watch or your phone and these are all really simple things that you can um, do and click and turn on that are uh, that are instantaneous and uh, these are the types of things in that that's all in the store so you can customize the basically it's like having an Alexa right like an Alexa FA that like monitors everything that you want as much or as little of what you're what you're actually holding a very unique uh, a very unique situation that was created doing it that way. Mm -hmm. Speaking of a fence sitter personality, I really liked that you have um, a watch list feature. So walk us through mm -hmm. that feature and how it works. Okay, so whatever, so when you come into the app, like uh, you get assigned a few things, like with a watch list based on your your persona and what you know where whether I'm kind of taking the exploring stuff or I'm I'm looking at it from a trader's perspective, and then we turn on different algorithms that are based on that as well. The watch list is something that whatever you select to to monitor, right? So I'm monitoring different stocks or ETFs or mutual funds, any of the kind of automated stuff that's in the app, the algorithms you don't even have to pick to turn on, those will send you notifications on your feed 
Um, you can turn on push notifications for that to come to your phone. It keeps you really informed uh, just uh, on a totally different scale of, of, of monitoring for your watch list. It, and you can organize that the way you want to so you can see in sectors or categories. Um, it's really kind of very fluid the way you can deal with it. But the point of the, the watch list is it will monitor things you hold mm -hmm. and things that you're just looking to hold. Maybe I'm trying to, I want to buy, let's say I want to buy, a great example would be I want to buy um, Apple, mm -hmm. right? And I think Apple is a great stock. Would you want to buy Apple just now because you thought it was a great stock? Or would you want to buy Apple when it goes on sale? Mm -hmm. Right? You probably like to buy Apple when it goes on sale, right? I want to buy it when it's on a discount versus when it's at a premium. And if you turn on the um, skunk drunk and swipe right algorithms, right? Very funny names, but uh, <laughs> skunk drunk will tell you it's kind of getting a little uh, frothy. And then swipe right would be like, hey, Apple's like uh, looking pretty good. Maybe you want to swipe right like at this point. Th those are the types of things you can do with the watch list and integrating it with some of those uh, algorithms that make it much better. I mean, you're going to get a better return if you bought it on sale than if you bought it when it's at a, at a high, right? And that's stuff we can consume. We can consume that. Why can't we consume that? You know, I don't want to buy it when it's expensive. I want to buy it when it's on sale. Right. Um, and that's the kind of stuff you can do with the watch list. What other products does the VicTech app have? OK, so it's a, it's an ecosystem. So we wanted to in order to kind of give uh, a, a user on any level all the different things that would transpire. We built uh, just about everything and continue to build different pieces. So you have the Explore search, which is like searching for stocks, ETFs, mutual funds from a uh, like a Spotify type. Bring it to me help me curate it, uh, help me think it through, um, augment me, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have the watch list feature, which allows you to select anything that you wanna monitor or anything that's in your portfolios. Um, it, will, it will run all the algorithms on and help you organize it. Then we have the portfolio feature, mm -hmm. which is real-time portfolio functionality. So you can go in there and practice investing. Um, you can uh, test different strategies, you can, um, monitor your investments using some of our portfolio algorithms. Then we have uh, live charting. So uh, one of the things that people want is real-time charting. So you can see real-time price. You can go buy something based on a story or a narrative, but you should really look at where is that trending? How is that trading? What's really going on in the market? We have uh, the live charts is all built for that with some, some significant uh, um, development and integration into that with the options data. And the options data is another piece and options, which is a full-blown options platform. So we have uh, our own options, artificial intelligence. So if you're actually trading options and you like options, you can go in there and um, uh, tell the app what you think is gonna happen and it will go find the most optimal option strategies. Uh, there's like 40 different strategies that are available and it will pick and uh, choose which ones make the most uh, 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 monetary sense from a profitability standpoint and bring them back to you. Um, then we have an options flows um, product and that is monitoring all the options activity in the, the market. And the reason there's a lot of options, options, options is that uh, options are actually uh, derivatives of securities. So they're like a derivative of an ETF or a derivative of a mutual fund or derivative of a stock. And they're being traded at a higher rate nowadays because of what's going on with Robinhood and Webull and all the other apps that they're overwhelming the actual market. So these, these options are actually driving the security. So if you don't have options information, you're like kind of a, a step behind nowadays. So we have all the options information. And then we also have a ton of market indicators um, that you can look at and, and choose from to determine like what's transpiring in the market at any given time. So, you know, it's a full ecosystem that is built with everything that's it's happening in the market. And we're always adding stuff. Mm -hmm. And also you have a uh, vSpace and vSpace is the, the kind of the home of the marketplace uh, for, for what you want to look at. So if you want to add something or you're looking at different channels or you're looking at different apps or features um it's a it's a free app to download so you're kind of choosing your own adventure right like um if i want to add this or i want to add that i can go into vspace and look at all the different things that are available so it's an in-app store that's kind of like nothing else that's ever been created for for investing and we're going to continue to grow that with people creating content 
that is coming from other like really smart people throughout the world, right? That are putting their content in there that maybe you would never have access to before. They, you know, you'd be able to go on the store and just look at it right there in BSpace. So that that's what's all available in the app. It's like a, it's a full ecosystem. So A to Z, right? Um, for investing. Mm -hmm. I love that, and I can tell that you're you're very passionate about this app and what you've created. I think you've done an exceptional job. I always like to end the show on a positive, inspirational note. So I want to ask you, since you are sure. a serial entrepreneur, you know, what advice do you have for someone who wants to create a business like you have and be successful at it? And what kind of challenges did you face along the way, and how did you overcome it? Okay, that's awesome. Um, I would say that you need to think through the the flows like uh, of life. Uh, that'd be the first thing I would say. You, there's so many great ideas that people have, and most businesses fail if they're not in the trend mm -hmm. or they're fighting upstream. So, like maybe you had a great idea for um, a product that was at the end of a, a cycle where everything was becoming commoditized. So, it doesn't mean your idea was wrong or that you were gonna um that you should fail but mm -hmm. if you weren't in something where everybody was headed the flows right where we're all headed then um it's probably going to be a hard uh, road right ahead um so be thinking about where people are going and try to help them solve a problem and and not where they were mm -hmm. right um and i think that that is probably one of the harder things you have to learn, like the first stuff I was doing, um, we were successful each time, but you know, as we've gone further into this, we continue to try and look further out to what really people are looking for. Cause that's like the essence of economy is, you know, what does somebody need and can I give that to them mm -hmm. or create that for them or where will they need this? That's like the, the best advice that I would give somebody at this stage that over the course of my my um, my career that I would say that. And the second thing I would say is uh, um, I'm a huge fan of like uh, reading a lot and um, follow a lot of great like uh, decision making stuff like thinking like Annie Duke is uh, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, for decision making and she has something called um, you know getting good at quitting mm -hmm. and that sounds insane right like most people say that uh, you should always be really uh, you know fight till the end and see everything through um, one of the things that is is really uh, successful is being very agile mm -hmm. and being very adaptive and continuing to put the user at the forefront and then in, you you don't have this ego as it relates to the problems you're trying to solve right so it's like you you're really focused on helping them at all costs and that is what creates the utility that then you don't have to be right if i'm wrong it's like okay i'm wrong next right mm -hmm. if that's not what you the user want that's not what they want that's not what the consumer wants um that's the advice that i would give it's like little stuff like that like read a lot of like applicable stuff and then try to get inside of things where they're trending towards. And COVID is a great example, right? Like how many things are changing because of COVID? Mm -hmm. And if you're like, hey, I'm gonna do something because I thought it was a good idea before, you should really think about whether that's gonna be a good idea going forward. And we're seeing that happen a lot uh, on a lot of spaces. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure people never would have thought we'd been doing this 10 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And here we are now, and this is, this is continuing to adapt and evolve. And so if, is, you know, learning how to not, um, you know, justifying your own ego, going to where everybody is trying to head towards solving problems for them out there is probably the most important thing that I've learned. And then, you know, you're not always like, you're not wrong, you're not right. You know, just let it be whatever people need it to be and then bring your ideas to that. And that's like kind of like the only, other like kind of quick piece of advice I get. I get I could talk about that for hours because <laughs> well, we've had like successes and failures along the way, right? Um, and you're gonna you're gonna fail at different things. Just keep keep uh, keep that focus on finding the solutions for people. Um, I got a really quick anecdotal story. Like if we, if everything reset, right? And this is the best story I've ever read, and it's very short. If everything reset, we all like we're living at a lake, and we took a. Um, we all had to fish for a living, right? Like to eat, right? We're mm -hmm. fishing, like we're like trying to stab fish, like, cause we've reset completely. And 
you know, I'm tired of doing that. I've, I've had enough of that. I'm gonna, um, you know, all the fish swim together. I go, I see this palm frond, you know, tree, and I, and a palm tree, and I can make a, a, you know, basket out of that, a net. And so I create a net at night, right, an intellectual property. I go the next day and I'm catching fish with that net. Now I've got tons of fish, right? And all the other people in the, in the, in the around the lake come over and they go, hey, you got extra fish. And I go, well, why don't you trade me a fish? I really want, you're good at like, you know, a bear skin rug, you can go kill a bear, but you can't catch a fish, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, right, the ingenuity and in solving the problem lifts the entire ecosystem up and the, the quality of life changes. Like, and that, that story just transfer, it just continues on. Like, I just become a great net maker all of a sudden, and that's all I do. Mm -hmm. And it was solving that problem that created prosperity for myself and for other people. And that's what entrepreneurs should really think about is trying to solve a problem that, that that creates utility for themselves and for the entire system. And if they do that, then prosperity follows and it helps you know, everyone, right? And so that's something I think is really pertinent nowadays and um, is, is kind of like a, a topic that's a little crazy to talk about sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think that's great advice, you know. Um for any entrepreneur being able to adapt, solve problems, and of course, help people, which I think you really are doing with this app. I think it's great, especially because right now there is a financial crisis and there pe a lot of people are, are in debt. So I think something yep. like your app, the VicTech app is fantastic because it's guiding people in the right direction. So I commend you. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for being on the show today. It's been a pleasure, very insightful, and come back anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll keep working at it. We'll keep working at it. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.